At Rubbermaid's Kansas plant, the Personal 6 ice chest is created in an amazing process. It all begins with beads, resin beads that is. Train loads of the pellets are delivered to the plant to make plastic products. White beads are mixed with colored beads and melted to make various cooler parts. The melted resin is first used to make the cooler's outer jacket in a process called blow molding. It looks like a, a tube of toothpaste and we force air into it or blow the air into it and it expands to fill the cavity. After the plastic is sucked into shape, two blocks pop out. Workers remove the excess and cut each block apart to reveal two separate ice chests. On another machine, the same process is used to create the cooler's lid. Next, the outer cooler and its liner are both briefly scorched with an open flame. This ensures they will stick together well. The parts are loaded onto a circular assembly machine where insulating foam is injected into the bottom of the cooler and the liner is pressed inside. The foam expands, sealing the duo together. Any extra plastic is scraped off and the handles and lids are snapped in place. Finally, the finished coolers are packed into boxes for shipping to stores. Believe it or not, it only takes a matter of minutes to make a complete ice chest. Tremendous technology for such a simple summertime staple. When it comes to kitchen accessories, one cuts straight to the good stuff. It is the simple cookie cutter. It brings back memories of baking with mom, but if you're having trouble finding just the right shape today, well, we have the place for you. They make hundreds of cookie cutters in just about every shape and size imaginable. Don't believe me? Watch. There are leaves and longhorns mermaids and moose, everything from elephants to armadillos. If you have ever craved a cookie in a crazy shape, Ray and Beth Brayman have a cutter for you. <laughs> have we got cookie cutters? The Kansas couple has carved out a niche making custom cookie cutters. From their website, they offer hundreds of shapes. We're always coming up with ideas. We see things and we think, oh, that'd make a great cookie cutter. If you can't find what you want, they'll make it just for you. They're what you want. They're not what somebody else is trying to sell you. Ray began making cookie cutters more than 20 years ago when Beth couldn't find the shape she hungered for. I was like, you work with Matt, oh, make me something. So he did. The little cutters turned into big business and today, Ray makes them full time. Each cutter is crafted by hand out of real copper. We get our copper in the 100 pound rolls. In this roll, we'll probably get 400 cookie cutters out of it. The first step is cutting down the copper. This machine here will split our copper exactly in two. That'll give us two equal parts to make our cookie cutters from. Next, the copper is hemmed. It'll roll one side of the cookie cutter material over so it'll be easy to handle and it won't be sharp. But yet it keeps the other side sharp so you can cut your cookies out. Then it's cut to the length for forming. We're going to use uh, this board that's got uh, holes and a little bit of a drawing, and it kind of gives us the structure in which to bend it around. Metal stakes and wooden dowels are placed in the pattern's holes. Then the cutter is bent into shape. All we do is go from hole to hole. Raise hands work like a master. And you've got to use a little bit of your imagination sometimes, too. Learning how the copper works is what your trick is. Once the cutter has its basic shape, the ends are clamped and soldered together. And there's a flamingo. Besides the fancy flamingos, one of Ray's favorites is the giant gingerbread boy. And another gingerbread boy is born. To bake one of these boys, it takes a pile of dough. Big cookie. And lots of icing. Little smile. But eating him is a family project. <laughs> and here's a gizmo that's made Thanksgiving dinner a whole lot easier. It's the pop-up timer. The simple device has been around for years, but 
Does anybody really understand how it works? Let's go inside the world's largest pop-up timer factory, and we'll find out together. Take a look. Crispy on the outside, moist and tender on the inside. Preparing the perfect turkey can be tricky, but one little gadget has made this meaty meal almost foolproof. It's very simple. When the stem pops up, it's done. Volk Enterprises helped innovate the pop-up timer. At their Turlock, California plant, they make more than 100 million pop-up timers every year. I think when people actually see how it's actually done, they're amazed. The timer is actually an incredibly simple invention. Pop-up timer really consists of four different basic parts. We have a barrel, a stem, which is the center part that actually pops up. We have a spring inside. And then in the bottom, we have a firing mechanism. Making the gadget begins with molding the plastic parts. Nylon pellets are the main ingredient. The beads are dumped into a hopper melted at 557 degrees, then pressed into the barrel shape. These tubes will become the outer case of the timer. This make up to 200, uh, 200 parts per shot. All those parts add up to over a million pounds of nylon a year. We actually are one of the biggest users of nylon other than the, the automotive industry. On another machine, the stem or plunger is formed. It will put the red pop in the timer. So a cupful of red beads is added to the usual white to give it its bright color. These beads are also melted and formed on a high pressure molding machine. Next, the freshly minted timer parts are put together. First, the barrels and plungers are lined up. Then, too fast for the human eye to see, the firing mechanism and a spring are inserted inside the barrel. The plunger goes in last. The timers are set by heating the firing mechanism inside. The plungers are then pushed down and quickly cooled off, locking them in place. The firing mechanism is key to this technology. It tells the timer when to pop. And what's special about the materials that we use is firing mechanisms is they are preset to react at certain temperatures. So we know that a certain mat firing mechanism will liquefy when it reaches a specific temperature. When the material in the bottom of the timer reaches 180 degrees, proper turkey temperature, it releases the plunger telling you your dinner is done. All of the materials that we use to manufacture the timers are accurate to within plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. To test the accuracy of their timers, Volt pops thousands of them each day in tubs of hot water. We can't put hundreds of timers, of course, in the turkey. Every, so what we do is we put it in a water bath to bring them up slowly, as an oven would bring your turkey up slowly. Still nothing is better than the real thing. Each day, up to nine turkeys are roasted to test the timers. Each one is wired up like a science project. We'll hook these up to a computer, and then the computer will take a sampling of temperature every minute throughout the cooking process at each of these wired locations. Besides being fun to watch, the pop-up timers are an important advancement in food safety, ensuring you won't carve into undercooked meat. One of the things that we've combated through the years is the, is the notion that the pop-up timer is kind of gimmicky. It's a sales tool, that it's not a real instrument of measure. And I think people are fascinated and oftentimes surprise to find out how uh, accurate and precise these timers actually are.